Let's jump into the word of God. Starting at verse 3, John chapter 6, it says, Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. Now, the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. That's a part to star right there, highlight underline in your bible he was testing him even though he knew what he was going to do philip answered him 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little but one of his disciples andrew simon peter's brother said to him there is a boy there there's something there's there's somebody there's something there's there's an opportunity there's a moment there's somebody he said there's a boy who has five barley loaves and two fish but what are they for so many and jesus said have the people sit down now there was much grass in this place so the men sat down about 5,000 in number and Jesus then took the loaves and when he had given thanks he distributed them to those who were seated so also the fish as much as they wanted and when they had eaten their fill he told his disciples gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost I want to come from the topic today make room can you write that down make room can you tell your neighbor real quick just make room yep yep tell somebody else on the other side say make room tell your third choice say third choice make room father in the name of jesus i pray that you will help us to make room in jesus name somebody say amen thank you god bless you worship team y'all can you help me give it up for the worship team and every dream team member in this place I think it's time for us to really look about making room I I think we've gotten a little bit comfortable since our COVID season and we've gotten comfortable with doing life in the same place that we've always been doing it I I think we've gotten comfortable with working at home some of you know you only change your top when you are on your zoom call you 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 got shorts on you got pajama pants on some of you are working out of the bed you you know how it is you you didn't wipe your face and that's all and we are concerned <laughs> but sometimes we've gotten just a little bit too comfortable and what I believe is that God is calling for us in this season to look because we're singing about this is a house of miracles, but God can't do nothing in stagnant water when things are still the same and you're leaving things right where they are. God needs to shake things up in order to be a house of miracles. I remember uh, uh, my wife and I, I, I'm so grateful for her. She, she has been, uh, 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 she's, she's been ministering before the Lord the last two weeks. She was in Miami last week and now she's in Jamaica. And, and I said to her when she called me uh, uh, last night, she was, she was so happy and uh, she was so grateful uh, uh, that she was where she was. And, and, and I felt a way about it. So I, I, I do thank God for her, but I feel like she's enjoying herself a little bit too much without me. But uh, uh, anyway, 50 15 years ago we get married and 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 when we get married my wife says I want to start a daycare center for for individuals who are who are struggling with with daycare and and don't have the money and I said babe uh, to be honest that's us we're struggling with daycare and how to pay for it she left her job and and she said, we're going to start this thing off in faith. 
And I, and, 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 and I said to her, oh, awesome, let's go, let's, let's do this. I said, how many children do you have? And she said, I have two. I said, no, 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 that's, that's not going to be enough. I, I'm, I'm going to need you to go back and ask for that job back because at this point of where we are, it doesn't seem like we can maintain what we need to do. But we, we went on with it. We, we took this faith leap and, 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 and I'll never forget, it was two of her best friends. And y'all know when best friends come in, everybody wants a discount. And, and, and so she said, babe, I'm going to start them off at $100. And, and so at the end of the week, we would collect that whole $200. And I, I said, I said I, I'm grateful for this and I'm, I'm grateful we get to do this. But it was only two kids. We moved from our location where we were to out in Baltimore County. And in Baltimore County, y'all can understand this. We, we were trying to make sure our daughter was in a great school. And, 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 and so when, when, when we, we get into where we are, it's, it's a two-bedroom. It's a living room. And so my wife grows in the daycare. Amen. Thanks be to God who giveth us the victory. The problem is... Is that 6 a.m. in the morning, there are children in my home ready to go when I haven't even woken up yet. When I found myself coming down the steps every day, there are children looking at me as if I am the intruder in the home. I begin to walk in and, 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 and I'm trying to walk around the kids. I don't know if you understand, but children will be everywhere. And I, and I excuse me, can you move over? Can, excuse me, can you walk over? Look, little boy with your waterhead, move over to the side. I'm just trying to get some breakfast. And I remember that we did this for seven years. Seven years of waking up to other people's children, little snotty nose, and you know, oh man, let me get out of here. Y'all look like y'all had COVID before there was COVID. And I'm, I'm, I'm pushing it aside. And so we have seven years of children, up to 15 children that are in our living room and dining room. Feeding them and taking care of them. And, and I never will forget, I said, this cannot last. I remember saying, we, we got to get some room. And, and, and I'll never forget, we had to start getting things in order. Because what my wife was looking to do was to remove herself from just being an in-home daycare to something that was serious, that was a true business. So she had to make preparation. Somebody say preparation. She had to make sure she was getting things in order and, and making room for the next season and the next level of what she was going to. But I, I, I didn't understand how much paperwork and how much time that it took. It. And so we eventually moved into a building. Thanks be to God. Somebody ought to thank God for my life right now and the way that it is. Listen, listen, I just want to say this to you because in order to get to the next level, it's not about there just being an opportunity. It's about proceeding, uh, understanding you've got to make room for what's next. If you don't make room for what's next, what you will do is add on to the confusion and the cluttered mess that you already have going on. And, and while you think you are an amazing multitasker, there are people around you that are saying to you, I'm promising you, you are not doing that great at it. Found ourselves in the place where we, 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 we started saying, well, what do we, what do we got to change? Can, can I tell you in order to see God move, there's got to be changes that are happening in your life that feel uncomfortable. And so it went from me being the sole person that took our daughter to school for 15 years so my wife could build something else. When I, when I look at the scripture, it's starting to get a little bit uncomfortable. There's 5,000 people, just men. This is not even including women and children. And the Bible tells us that Jesus says to Philip, you know, we got to feed these people. I need you to help me feed these people. And Philip just says to him, listen, Jesus, that there, there's not enough whole foods. There, there's not enough markets to feed this amount of people. The Bible says that Jesus said this to Philip because he was testing him. I, 
I'm, I'm interested, has God spoken to you a dream that is beyond what you understand or are able to comprehend? Because something in the scripture said in Ephesians that he would do exceeding and abundantly above more than you could ask or think. But what you were expecting to do is do something in the realm of the resources that you already have. And God's vision is bigger than your resources. You asked God for a vision, but he gave you something that was greater than what you could ever imagine or think. The problem is, is when you compare what you have to what God wants you to do, you don't feel qualified. You don't feel like you have it all together and you're waiting for God to do something on the inside. And God is saying, I don't even need to do anything on the inside. I just need you to believe me. I think for somebody today, your faith is at test. To whom has God given a vision to? And I, I want to say this to you. Who has God given a vision to? And, and you're looking at the vision and saying to yourself, this is greater than what I could ever do. This is far more uh, bigger than what I ever dreamed of. And some of you have self-sabotaged your life. So you would not be accountable to what God put inside of you. But every time you go to sleep, you keep remembering something about this says this is just not enough. Anybody ever been there? You've been tossing and turning. You're trying to live comfortable. You've got the two cars. You've got the garage. You've got everything you expected. But for some reason, you're not fulfilled because God is after your purpose, not your preference. And I'm interested in that if anybody in here is interested in, in God fulfilling the purpose over their life, they would be a little bit more in tune to that. God is not interested in what you can do. God is just asking you to be along with what he already has decided he's going to do. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in what? Heaven. Tell your neighbor real quick. It's already in heaven. See, what God is not asking you to do is something uh, that is not already done. For my God uh, works from the end back to the beginning uh, because he's so good. He would never ask you to do something that he has not already completed. That thing, just tell your neighbor, it's already done. My God, if it's already done, then why are you acting and why are you moping around as if you need to have what you need in order to get to where you're going? I want to tell you, the Bible says, my God shall supply all my needs according to what his riches and glory. So I just I just tend to think if I know that God already has it in control, then why should I worry about something that he's already taken care of? Anybody know when you go out to dinner and you know the bill is already taken care of, you know you eat a little bit differently. Can I get an appetizer? I would like, matter of fact, an extra. Can you put a side on it and please bring the dessert menu? I mean, you go out and you start adding things on. You start ordering stuff. You don't even know what it is. Give me the ceviche. ceviche. Who, who is ceviche? Who is that? I don't know her. Ordering sparkling water. You, you never drink sparkling water. You know that thing tastes like Alka-Seltzer? All right, all right. I won't put all my business out there. But there, there, there's something that we understand when it's already been provided for. How would you live if you already knew that the promise that God has spoken on your life is already provided for? Would you move differently? Would you step out differently? Would you ask differently? Would you go to work differently? Like, I just want to let y'all know I'm not going to be here for much too longer because what God promised me is on its way. Why are you so happy every time you come in Monday? Because it may be my last Monday. You don't even know. God promised that thing for me, and I'm just excited. I want to make sure I got the right attitude when he tells me to walk out. Because once I move in my purpose, there is no stopping me. 
So you walk in and, 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 you're, and, and you're looking things in the wrong perspective. And that's my first point as we're deciding to make room in our life for God to fulfill the purpose. The first thing you need to do is change the way you see. Some of us don't see so well. Because everything that we're looking at, we're looking at it through the lens of we must provide what is needed. And God is saying, I've already provided for you. I just need you to walk it out. (laughs) You got to change the way you see. If you change the way you see, it would change the way you talk. And if you change the way you talk, it would change the way you act. And the way that you will be living out is according to the faith of what you believe. Because you understand that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So I've got to please God in order for it to come through and work out in my favor. So I've got to operate by faith. But if my past is a part of my present... I can't operate according to what God's called me to do. Some of you, you you just can't change the way you see yourself. You see yourself as the old five-year-old that was left and broken. And God sees you as a child of God, mended back together as a testimony of his goodness and his faithfulness. You keep seeing yourself abandoned. God sees you as something greater that could never be broken down. I am more than a survivor. I am a conqueror. But it's all about how you see. It's all about the way you see your future. Some of you are bored where you are because you haven't taken a look past where you are to where God's called you to be. You got to see your future to be excited about moving forward. You can't be excited about going forward to something you have no vision for. That's why for some of us, everything in front of us looks so appetizing. Because all we have vision for is what we see right in front of us instead of looking past. And if you look past, you will make a decision. This is not what I need for where I'm going. This is only what I need for where I am right now. That's why we choose in lonely times to pick the wrong people because we're only operating for where we are, not for where we're going. Your desperation is keeping you From the future you. Psalms 119 and 18 says this. Open my eyes. So I can see what you show me. Of your what? Miracle wonders. I wonder if you have a miracle wonder in your eyesight. I wonder if you have a miracle wonder of what God could possibly do. Any of you just can get a hold of the thought of what God would do. What if God actually answered the prayer that you pray? What if God actually moved in your life the way that you saw it? What if the you that you don't believe is available actually started operating? You would lose your mind. You wouldn't even know. Oh my God. I didn't even know I could do this. I didn't even know I could be at this point. You would see yourself differently. But the issue is too many of us don't know how to see properly. Danny, real quick. Can can I, can I hold your glasses? Listen, there we go. Let me me hold those. Oh, these are nice, Danny. God bless your heart. All right. They're beside you. All right. All right. You can go ahead and sit. You got, I'll call you back for these glasses. If you can't see me, look at that jumbotron right there. (laughs) You know what the problem in life is? So many of us are looking at our lives through the lens of other people. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh. Somebody is driving a... uh... When I put these glasses on, I can't see the way I'm supposed to see because what's in these glasses are specific to the individual wearing them. 
The problem that I have is too many times I'm looking out of the lens of my broken past, the lens of what somebody said I wouldn't be, the lens of what my finances look like right now, the lens of how broken I think my life is. But if you would take a moment and get out of everybody else's business and stop trying to please everybody else and start looking at your life the way that God sees you and be able to say to myself, I am who I am because God has a me and take off social media's glasses and take off Facebook's glasses and start looking at yourself and say, I see me. I look good. When God created me, I knew I was something special. When you walk knowing who you are, <laughs> you stop doing what everybody else does. You know, you don't look like everybody else. I was never supposed to look back at everybody else. Don't you even mind? Matter of fact, stay out my business. Because God's doing a new thing in me. I gotta change the way. Here, can I can I say something real quick? Stop making everybody else see you the way you don't even see yourself. It's, it's annoying. I'm the head of the house. I don't see you on your knees. See, we want people to see us in a way that we don't carry and live out our lives. Because the Bible lets me know in Romans chapter 5, it says something about there's suffering that produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. Here's the problem. Oftentimes we don't have hope for what we see in ourselves because we haven't had the character to produce what we want to see. So we don't believe us. Did you get that? The idea behind it is the reason you can't move forward is because you don't even believe you because you haven't taken the time to go through what you need to go through in order to become who you could believe yourself to be. So you make other people speak it for you. And the force of everybody else speaking it for you puts them in position to try to see you in the light that you haven't made the choice to see yourself in. Can I tell you, you would go a lot further if you would stop waiting for everybody else to confirm in you, which you won't even confirm in yourself. <laughs> you would just say, listen, I'm more than a conqueror. Yeah, I am, pastor. I'm more, more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. <laughs> the reason the scripture doesn't stick is because you don't believe it for you. Because you keep giving up. So being a conqueror doesn't seem like it actually matters when the scripture comes because the problem is, is I haven't conquered anything in a long time. But if I made the decision to stop worrying about my neighbor and start worrying about where I was, I could actually conquer something so that I could believe something so that I could hope something. You got you to gotta change the way you see Self. And I need you to understand this because when you see yourself differently, you know you're built differently. Anybody know they built differently? Let me tell you how you know you're built differently. You keep trying to explain yourself to people, but nobody seems to understand. You built differently. Do I got any gym people in here? I got people that like going to the gym. Yeah, gym people. You built differently. You know you are. You built, why are you built differently? In the morning, you're choosing to eat chopped up spinach and, and, and a protein and, and you're going to the gym happy. The rest of us. 
crying. You understand? I mean, we're crying. Y'all look at it. It's not that hard. Don't tell me what's not that hard. You build differently. But you got to remember for what God called you to do, you're built differently. You operate on a different time. Stop trying to explain it. You up doing stuff for that church again? Yeah, I'm built differently. This is the way that I do it. This is the way that I operate. This is how I go. I know that may not be for you, but you look like everybody else. I'm built differently. You still single? Yes. You still miserable? I'm built differently. I decided to pick what was going to be best for me. But stop coming to me crying about what you picked. Because, tell your neighbor real quick, I'm built differently. Y'all like that? Y'all was like, yeah, man. I got something for my singleness. Come on, Jesus. You built differently. Stop trying to be like everybody else. Stop trying to explain to the masses why you do what you do. You're built differently. You're looking for... Every, here, here's, here's one of our biggest problems. We're always looking for everybody to jump on board when we get excited. I'm going to text two people. God gave me this revelation. Crickets. Why is it crickets on the thread? Because they're not reading the word. So they don't get excited what you get excited about. You build differently. Stop being offended because everybody is not in line with you. God's asking you to do something that you can't even do yourself. Why are you going to ask somebody else to join you? Point number two, I, in order to make room, I need you to declutter. Because some of you are hoarding some brokenness in your life that will not make room for God to operate where you are. You're, 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 you're so cluttered with mess. You're so cluttered with your past that it sounds like a broken record. You know that year they fired me about seven years ago. I need you to let that go and get another job. declutter because we got a lot of stuff that's holding us up and then what happens is when God actually blesses us we put the weight of our clutter on the blessing now the blessing doesn't look like a blessing anymore it seems like a weight because you don't know how to use it in the proper mindset and in the proper form because now it's all weighty and all on me and I don't know what to do with you because I'm not healthy so I need you to compensate for where I haven't done the work you got to declutter your life. You, you got to declutter the way that you're thinking. You, you've got to declutter the way that you see things. Bible told us that, 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 that Jesus said to them, hey, hey, if you look in the other uh, 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 gospels in Luke, he says, put them in groups of 150. See, the area is that he was getting them into a place where he could get to them. The issue is when your life is so decluttered, God can't get to you to do what he wants to do in you. Because you're so consumed with all the things that you've been hoarding that are a possibility of bringing you fulfillment. But you found yourself in a place that you keep seeing it and keep doing it, but it's gotten no better. Can I tell you, get rid of it. Get rid of the hate and anger. Get rid of the notion that you are still 21. You are not 21. My father, my father used to play football and baseball and, 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 and we went downstairs in the basement, uh, there were trophies. Y'all know trophies, uh, baseball trophies and, and football trophies. And, 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 and every so often I go to my parents and, and he would be in the basement and he would say, Hey, you see these trophies? <laughs> say, yeah, dad, for the, for the hundredth time. Yes, I've seen them. He would say, you would, you would see the, you see these trophies? Do you see them? Man, I used to play. He said, you know, the Orioles called me. I said, well, 
I got to believe you because you're my father, but... The problem is oftentimes we'll live in our heyday because we have no future to look to. And sometimes the greatest thing that holds you is your success of your past to get you to where you're going in your future. Because all you keep doing is looking at how to repeat what you used to do. But what you used to do was not to keep you where you are now. It was just a help to get you to this point. But stop going back at it as a reference point for what you need to do now. God's doing a new thing. Can't you perceive it? Can't you see it? Stop trying to repeat what is of old and start saying, God, you've got something for me in this season. Only just to what? Remember what you did? I need you to move right now for what you're going to do. Tell your neighbor real quick, God's doing something. I need you to move past God did and I need you to move to God's doing something. That means God is what? Active. He is moving in a way that isn't just stale and where it used to be. God is doing something. Scripture lets us know in Psalms 139, 23 and 24. This is what David said. He said, search me, O God. And know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Calm yourself down. He says, point out anything in me that offends you. And lead me along the path of everlasting life. (laughs) Sometimes you got to calm down. You're anxious, you're, you're antsy, you're, we gotta, we, come on, we, project after project after project, because you don't know how to sit still. Scripture says, wait on the Lord. <laughs> He's like, what's that? How you spell that? Is that like, wait, like W-H-E-Y? Like, wait, what kind of way are we talking about? No, wait on the Lord. And while you're waiting, be of good carriage. Stop complaining about the process of God forming you so that you can actually keep this blessing. Because you know what you did with the last one. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> Wait. On the Lord. Tell your neighbor, just wait. Good Lord, that vision board got you so hype. It said it's a car on there, and then my husband, and then you see after that, and then we should be here by now. God says, I'm not on your time, I'm on my time. Wait. Wait on the Lord. Be of good carriage. He'll strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. You got to make the decision to wait on God so that he can do in you what he's calling you to do. But you've got to declutter so there can be some movement in what God wants to do in your life. (laughs) And the last point I want to give you, last point, point three. Is I need you to waste nothing. Don't. Don't you waste a thing. Like, this is what Jesus, he, he told him, he says, after, after they finished feeding the 5,000, they had leftovers. Now, to you, leftovers may be a bad thing in your house because you don't eat food after one time. I know how you get. Mm-mm, I, I don't do that, all right? Uh, I don't eat leftovers. <laughs> but Jesus said, you better pick up them leftovers. Romans chapter 8, verse 28 says this, and we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes, it may not have been the initial reason, but he causes all things to work together as a plan for the good of those who love God 
to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Don't you waste that hurt. Don't you waste that pain. Can I, can I tell somebody in here? Don't you even waste that jacked up relationship. Because it was there to teach you something. Don't you leave it out. Don't you keep complaining about it. But I need you to pull from it. God, give me a lesson from it. Give me an understanding. What were you doing? Why did you do it? What happened in that moment, in that season? I just need you to tell me. I don't want to waste it. And when you learn not to waste it, you don't get in a place where you're bitter. You get better. Listen, some of y'all, that last relationship hurt you, but you found somebody so good that you know you married up. You like had a, I had you see you might you see them some they pass through your thread or you walk past them in church. Don't look at them. <laughs> but you walk past them. And every time you walk past, you just say, "Oh, thank you, Lord." <laughs> Woo! If I'd have got caught up in that thing right there. I'm telling you, don't you get bitter. Tell somebody, get better. Oh my God, don't you waste the hurt. Don't you waste the pain. Don't you waste the past. Use everything that has come your way as something not to get bitter, but I'm getting better. I won't worry about being fired from that job because a better one is on the way. I'm not worried about staying where I was because better is on the way. Can somebody just say better is on the way? I know God's got better for me. I know there's a better plan for me. I know there's something greater for me. Better is on the way. I won't say where I am, but better is on the way. I may be driving what I'm driving now, but see me in a couple days. Uh, better is on the way. I need somebody to get it in their heart. Better is on the way. Better is coming. Better is coming soon. Uh, I'm just believing it. I believe God can do exceeding uh, abundantly above all that I can ask or think. The Bible says he will do something that no eye has seen uh, and no ear has heard uh, and no mind has conceived uh, the things that God has for me. Just somebody say better. Say it again, better. I'm believing God for better. I'm believing God to work a miracle. This is a house uh, of miracles because better is on the way. Somebody shout better. So make room today. Make room for God to move and to operate. Because we won't get bitter. We'll get better. Waste nothing. Put nothing to the side. Collect everything that God has for you. Because better is on the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare today, that you would make room inside of each and every one of us. David says, search me because oftentimes I don't know what's inside. But I ask that you search me, oh God. And anything that you find, I ask you to take it out. So that I can be the vessel that you are calling me to be today in Jesus name somebody say amen, amen. hallelujah amen. I believe in this moment it's an opportunity for you to take a fresh start I think it's an opportunity whether you've never come to Christ or you were in that in-between space and you've been disconnected, I think today's a fresh start. And if you're ready for a fresh start, I, I believe this is an opportunity for you to connect and, and see God move and operate in your life like never before. So what I'm going to do, if, if you're ready for a fresh start, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. And I say this often, it's not the prayer that saves you, but it truly is the posture of your heart. Repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for accepting me. 
just as I am. Forgive me for my sins. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. And I commit to putting you first in my life. Take control of the throne of my life and make me who you want me to be. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Come on, help me celebrate those that made that decision in this house.